We have come to worship Almighty God, and I am glad that all of you are here this day. I'm going to still make sure that uh, some of you got cards, and if you didn't, uh, I'll, I'll make sure that you, you get them. But uh, I believe the band is going to lead us in a song now. So let's worship, worship the Lord.
Amen. That's a great, great new take on an old hymn. Thank you for that. Um, want to hear any prayer requests that you have today? I'm going to share these that are going on in the life of our church. We want to begin with a praise uh, for the birth of Corinne Leland Powell. She is the newborn daughter of Amy, I'm sorry, Adam and Emily Powell. <laughs> Jump in the gun there. Not quite. Close. We'll be doing that maybe in the next week or two as well. But she's the daughter of Adam and Emily Powell. And she was born September 29th, and mom and baby are doing just fine. So thanks be to God for this new life in our church family. We also want to lift Martha Stevens, who's home from the hospital, recovering from back surgery. Jim and Biddy Alford are still overcoming COVID. Jim is doing better. His journey back has been a little slower than, than Biddy's. Biddy's has never really been all that serious. Jim's had uh, to have oxygen a little more, but not in the hospital or anything like that, but is doing better slowly but surely. Jean Fortune is under hospice care at Kirby Pines. Susan Batson and Bob are in Houston as she continues uh, a new round of radiation treatment for her battle against cancer. She has another round that starts tomorrow. And uh, David Burns uh, continues to struggle and find strength, though, for his fight against various health issues. So we lift him and Carol Ann and all that love him and their family. What joys or concerns would you like to lift today? Just raise a hand. We'll be happy to share them. Family of Reverend Paul Clayton. Annette? Yes. Yeah, Jim Griffith's last living sibling, uh, Miss Perry, died this past week. Anybody? Checking in? Yeah, Heather? All right, Greg's birthday is tomorrow. Another year older for all of us. All right, well, claim a moment of silence and lift the prayers that are on your heart, and then I'll lift a prayer for us, and we'll close with our Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Ever-listening God, in this time of prayer, we desire to connect with you on a personal level. We are grateful for your presence and for your ability to collectively hear the prayers of the world Yet you are familiar with each of our voices, and you recognize us when we call out to you. Today is a day for commitments. We know that every day you are committed to us, and that we can find strength and comfort in your faithfulness and sacrifice. As we make our commitments for the giving and sharing of our resources next year, we desire to also recommit ourselves and our lives as faithful followers of Jesus. Though life is tiring and challenging, we are able to persevere despite our weaknesses because of the strength we get from your grace. You also offer forgiveness for our sins and our shortcomings. And we give thanks that we can come to your table this day and remember the sacrifice and salvation offered by our Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray for our community, our nation, and our world. We are grateful for this creation that you have made, which today struggles in so many ways. We ask for your power that heals restores, blesses, challenges, and corrects to come among us in real and tangible ways. Help those who are sick, those who are left behind, those who go unnoticed, those who are asking why or how long, and those who desire to know you and your love in a deeper way. Help our church and its people to contribute to the unity and holistic health of our community and our church. Let us strive to be part of the solution to our problems and not to contribute to the cause of them. So as we come today to receive the holy bread of life in Jesus, let us leave with a willingness to also be the bread of life, the bread of life and love in Christ to the world. Let us commit to the full use of our lives for your grace. Help us to reflect your glory in what we say and do, and let us become vessels for the good news that you bring into this world. Hear the echoes of our prayer as we join our voices with those of Christ as we pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 
Uh, the service today is also not going to have a, a full-length traditional sermon. I want to share some of, this, of that time with uh, one of our church members, Jackie Leonard. And um, we're using Romans 5, chapter, or chapter 5, verses 1 through 5, as kind of our foundation for this. And it's a time for us to reflect um, on what not only it means, but what hope means to us and what sacrifice means to us and, and what our sense of hope is as people of faith. So I'm going to ask Jackie to come forward. Are you reading the scripture or do you want me to read it? You're going to read it. Wonderful. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you. I will be reading from Romans 5, 1 through 5. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God, not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. When I think about this scripture, I think about suffering in a way that is a little different from most because suffering can be uh, a painful experience, whether it's through health, whether it's through the loss of a loved one or even a loss of a job. And also when I think about character and how it develops over time, it reminds me of an experience that I had when I was just 27 years old. I was newly minted, bachelor's degree, teacher, with my first job. And you know, when you get your first job, you just kind of have some joy about that. But two years later, there was a cutback, and I lost my job. And I didn't know what was going to happen, even though I had a husband and a th another income, he depended upon me for that teaching job. And I searched high and low, put in applications all over the city of St. Louis, and nothing was happening. And our church happened to be taking a trip to the Holy Land the next year after I was laid off. And I still hadn't had a job after a whole year. And I remember, I think there's a picture somewhere that we can show. I remember being at the Wailing Wall. That's me in the gray slacks. I know I look a little different there. Uh, but I just wrote a simple note that said, Lord, bless me to get a good job. I didn't say what kind. I didn't say it had to be in teaching again. I just said a good job. And for someone to be looking for work for a year at that age, thinking that, you know, uh, why is this happening to me? I did everything that I knew. I, just, I still have student loans to pay. Uh, I was building character through that and thinking that God and hoping that God would make a difference. And so not too long after I put that note in the wailing wall, which was a symbol of releasing my faith and putting my hope in God and, and also in building character and perseverance, as the scripture says. Not too long after that, <clears throat> I did receive a call for a job, but it was all the way in Dallas, Texas, instead of in St. Louis. But by faith, our family went, and my life changed in a different course because of that move. A year later, I actually moved, in, we moved into a home and that home was right next door to George Suggs and his family. Never did I know that our lives would reconnect this long later, this much time later. But his wife passed away in 2009. I was single, and we just rekindled a friendship that turned into a marriage a month ago. And who knew, I didn't know, that losing that job suffering through a year of, 
applying for jobs, but yet being faithful to the church that most of the members are standing there. Some may be deceased now. And putting my hope in God and casting my bread upon the water, which means that you let it go, you release it. And the Bible says after many days it will return to you. Who knew that it would return in the way that it did? And so sometimes our lives take a different path, and God leads us in ways that we can't even imagine. But if we uh, live in hope and faith and peace, then we can trust God to follow the path that he has set for us. And so that is my reflection today. Thank you for listening. Amen. Thank you. It's been said, I've heard it said before, that before God gives us a place, God gives us a plan. A lot of times we, wanna, we want the place first to determine if we want to live into the plan. But as a person of faith, you really do realize that it's, you have to accept the plan first. And then the place, things will fall into place, maybe is a good way of putting it. Um, before we uh, continue our worship, and I tell you, I have set down my uh, order of service. Is the um, is there? I think the offering is next. We changed the order, and then I forgot to bring in an, uh, an order with me. But it is. That's what I thought. Okay. So those who are taking up the offering, thank you. If you would please come. Um, remember, if you're a church member. Uh, we hope that you will give. If you're a guest, we don't want to obligate you to give or feel pressure to give. But if you do give, we want you to do so with a glad and generous heart as we get these gifts to the building of God's kingdom in and through this place.
share this second scripture reading with you, and the band's going to do one more song, for, well, another song for us. We're adding a, an extra song this week. This song, uh, this song, this reading is from the Gospel of John, the sixth chapter, and it's verses 35 through 48. So I invite you to stand to honor this gospel reading as you were able. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I said to you, you that you have seen me, and yet you do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me. But raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them on the last day. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me. And I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, And they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone who has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life, for I am the bread of life. Friends, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks. Please have a seat.
Amen. I'm grateful to, uh, to Jackie for her words and her witness. And um, just want to add a, a short reflection to um, the John passage that we heard. And if you recall, it opened and closed with the same phrase of Jesus saying, what? I'm the bread of life. We had a, uh, our first meeting uh, of our clergy in the metro district of the Methodist Church with our new district superintendent, Reverend Dr. Artura Eason Williams. You'll meet her at some point. Uh, we had that first meeting last week. It was online. It was a Zoom meeting. And uh, an exercise that she uh, took us through. It was part business meeting. It was a part sharing about what's going on in our individual churches or ministries. And then it was also part worship. And she did something uh, that is one thing that I'm sharing with you today. And I think I've got a few. I think I left it back there, but that's okay. Your card that you were given that says, I am bread for. Uh, she took this exercise and she used that, that passage from John 6. And I appreciated that because it, it kind of gave me a, an additional thing that we could do today. Um, when Jesus says, I'm the bread of life. In some translations, it says, I'm bread for life. And that, that works too. I like both of those. The bread for life, the bread of life. Jesus is basically saying, I can be all that you need me to be if you will believe in me. I can be the bread for your life. I can be the bread of your life. But it's also saying that each of us is a slice or a portion of that bread once it's given to us. Therefore, we are called to be bread for and of other things, as we're striving to be the body of Christ to the world. And so, in a little bit, uh, when you come up to receive communion, there'll be, there'll be two baskets. One basket, you'll put any gift that you want to give to support the Covenant Cares ministry, your communion offering. And then the other basket will be a basket to put your pledge card if you have one. If you've already made a pledge online for, for next year, that's fine. Don't, don't worry about presenting anything today. And I want everybody, though, to bring your bread card. I am bread for card. And you'll put that in, in, in the basket along with any pledge cards. And because today's commitment is not just about uh, making a financial commitment to the budget for 2022. It's also about making a personal commitment that not only have we received the bread of life from Jesus, we, we have to then answer the call to go and be the bread of life. And we can, we can do that in such a, a wide variety of ways among the, the many gifts and graces that have been given to covenant because of what all of you all have in the varieties of gifts and graces that you have. And on Wednesday, in the, my Wednesday email that goes out, I'm going to share a lot of, of the cards that you all submit. You don't have to put your name on it. That's not required. Uh, but I'm going I'm to I'm tell and, and share uh, what all the people in the first service and this service offer in being bred for the body of Christ, an extension of that that we have been given today. I want us to think about the hope that we have talked about the last few weeks and that as we have, have prayerfully said that hope is rising, even in the midst of, of challenging times and, and times when it seems like it's, find, it's hard to find hope, that I want to remind us that hope is not a passive state. It is not something where a person of faith just sits back and says, well, I hope God will take care of that. Or I hope someone will volunteer for that, that need that the church has that they've been announcing for weeks now. Or I hope that someone will maybe give an extra gift that helps us meet some goal. Or will help with the children's ministry. Or I hope, I hope. No, to be a person of faith is to say that hope is not just a wish. It is a partnership. And it's work. And when you're a person of faith, you are saying, when I say I hope, I am willing to partner with God to work for that which I am hoping can become a reality. And that's part of what we are all about at the church. When someone comes in the church, either because they need something or they're visiting with us for the first time, what do you think their hopes are? Their hopes are, among many things, that it will be a friendly church. Their hopes are that they will be accepted. Their hopes are that um, 
Maybe if they need some type of help, that there'll be someone there that can help them with that need. And there's a great phrase in that passage that, uh, that Jackie read from Romans 5. And in some translations, the one that she shared, it said, Hope does not, a- after we have talked about suffering producing, what? Perseverance? Perseverance producing character. Character producing hope. And hope, her translation said, does not bring us to shame. Other translations say hope does not disappoint us. But yet sometimes I know of a church as a body, and, you're, and pastors too, we can disappoint. We don't, we don't meet the needs that someone has. We don't meet the hopes that someone has. And so it's a collective effort in that working partnership. Sometimes you, have, you probably had somebody in your life when you were growing up or something kind of give you it's, it's unintentional, but it can be almost a little bit of false hope. You can tell somebody, you can be anything you want to be. And depending on what that thing is, you may not have the physical gifts or, or wired mentally to, to be able to accomplish a certain type of, of vocation or task or, or, or talent that you really want to display, but then you suddenly realize, I don't think I have it in the way that I was hoping I had it. So in that way, it's, it's not always helpful to tell somebody this carte blanche you can be anything you want but as a person of faith i can say this and i believe it's god's sincere hope for us because god's willing to partner with us and that is you can't be anything you want to be but you can be everything that god wants you to be you can be a kind person you can be a loving person the the primary commandment when Jesus is asked that, is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your mind and with all your strength and all your soul. And Jesus says, and the second is like that. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And then he says, on these two commandments that sit side by side at the top of the priority list, on those two commandments hang all the rest of the law. They don't hang on the law. The law hangs on those. You live into the law by loving the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind and loving your neighbor as yourself. And we get that backwards so often when we want to tell the world about the law that so-and-so or some group or some person is not fulfilling or living into, and therefore they must be damned. And we have forgotten that the true first law on which that judgment hangs is the one that says, first, we have to love the Lord our God with all that we have and to love our neighbor as ourselves. And you don't need to worry about the rest of them if you're not living into those two first. And that's what I believe our church can be good at doing if that's what we focus on. You can... You can't always be anything you want to be, but you can be everything that God wants you to be. The grace that comes in forgiveness is the grace that is truly our our best hope. I went to a a funeral uh, yesterday. Yesterday was a truly pastoral, I call it a pastoral pendulum swing kind of day. I went to a funeral in Jackson, Tennessee for Paul Clayton that Carolyn Sigmund lifted. Paul was the Longtime senior pastor at Jackson First. I was his associate pastor for four years. It was actually the last associate he ever had. I made him retire, apparently. Actually, he turned 70 at the time. That was the retirement age, so he had no choice. Uh, He was also our former former district superintendent. He was the superintendent of our district back when Memphis had two districts, the McKendry and the Asbury, and he was the Asbury superintendent when Harry Durbin became our pastor back in the early 90s, late 80s, early 90s. And uh, he led a wonderful life. And there were some things that were said at that service that, that kind of spoke to me. Um, he wanted to be a goodness contributor. Whatever he did in his life and his ministry, he wanted to make sure he was contributing to the goodness of the well-being of the world. He wanted to be a goodness contributor. And many people would say he was able to do that. He said he noticed that the older he got, the larger his circle of love grew. And that he had wished that he had become less judgmental 
earlier in his ministry rather than later. He wished he had found that that big circle, that larger circle of love and acceptance earlier in his ministry instead of later. And really what he was saying is that he had wished he had been, he had been done, had done a greater job at giving hope throughout his ministry rather than discovering the real value of it later in ministry. It wasn't too late, but it was later. And I thought, well, that could be the wish for all of us. That could be the hope for all of us. That way, the hope that people have when they come to faith, when they come to church, when they come to our church, it won't be disappointed because this church has been given an overflowing amount of the Holy Spirit that Paul says is what gives us the power then from that suffering that we have endured that, that, that gave us perseverance and stick to And then that which gave us character. You know what they say about suffering? Suffering doesn't necessarily just uh, give us character. It also reveals it. And our country and world have suffered a lot in the last couple of years from a variety of angles. And what has that revealed about our character? And from that character, as people of faith, it's supposed to produce hope. And I sometimes don't hear voices in the church that are offering a lot of hope. But they're reflecting a part of the character that our society has now that doesn't necessarily mean the best kind of character. Not necessarily always a Christ-like character. But from that, character does ultimately produce a hope. A hope that if that hope is in Christ, will not disappoint us if we are willing to commit ourselves to partnering with Christ and being the hope for the world. So as you prepare to, uh, to come up and receive communion, there will be two baskets here. Uh, one, you can put any donation you want to make for um, Covenant Cares Ministry. And the other basket, you can place both your, um, your pledge card, if you have one today, and also your I Am Bread For card. And I want you to think about... Um, what, what God has gifted you in some ways uh, to be bred for. I want to share just a few. Uh, I printed off when, uh, when, the, when Dr. Or Eason Williams last week during the clergy meeting um, asked us in the comment section of that Zoom meeting to put, as pastors, what are we trying to be bred for? These are some of the responses. And they don't have to reflect what yours are. They can be short, they can be long, they can be one word. I am bred for immigrants and refugees. I am bred for facilitating recovery groups for people who are addicted. I am bred nourishing those who are grieving. I am bred because I am serving a cross-racial appointment and doing so hopefully with grace and humility. I am bred for the hungry. I am bred for acceptance in the absence of agreement. I am bred when I comfort people who have been forced into exile because of COVID, separated from their loved ones in the hospital. And I try to be with those families when their loved one dies and they were not able to see them. And this last one I thought was, it was funny, but it was also poignant. Sometimes I am bread left out too long, and you've got to scrape the mold off before you serve me. But I'm still good for something. Might be a little more truthful and revealing than we want to admit. All of us are bread for something. And it's not just because we want to ask you to commit some bread, some dough, to use the old street term for money, to the church next year. It's because we're also making commitments to be the body of Christ, the slice of the bread of the body of, of Christ that we've been given, the bread of life, what part are we then going to offer to the world? And I know you can do that. And uh, I know that Carolyn Sigmund and uh, Carol Goddard are going to come and assist with serving communion today. So I'm going to get a chair for Miss Carol. And Carolyn's going to come up. Uh, and 
I'll let you go and have a seat, and I'll bless the elements. You'll stand on the other side of her. We're going to have one line. I'm going to put this over just a little bit to the side. On the night that Jesus gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, and he broke the bread, and he passed it among the disciples, and he said, Now take and eat, for this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me, and know that your sins are forgiven. And then Jesus took the cup, and he passed the cup among them, and he said, Now take and eat, for this is for take and drink from this cup, which is the cup of salvation, which is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, the mighty acts of Jesus Christ, let us offer ourselves as holy living sacrifices, a slice of the bread of life given by Christ. Pour out your spirit on us gathered here, O God, and on these gifts of bread and the juice of the vine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in mission and ministry to all the world as Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. By the power of the Holy Spirit in this your holy church, we give all honor and glory to you, almighty God, now and forever. Let the church say, amen. Carol is going to uh, have the basket of bread, and she's going to give you a piece as you come with your hands cupped. And Carolyn's going to have uh, cups. And as you come, you may take a cup from the tray. And uh, if you'd like to kneel at one of the prayer stations in the corners, you may do that. There are receptacles as you head back to your seat to place your, your cup in. Uh, but remember that the invitation that you received are about to receive comes from our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the host of this meal. He has set this table. You do not have to be a member of this church or the United Methodist Church to receive Holy Communion. You merely have to be a, a believer in Christ seeking forgiveness for your sins and knowing that through this grace and through the sacrifice that Jesus offers, that forgiveness is given to you. Let's pause for a moment of silent prayer where you offer your confession of sin to God seeking forgiveness. Oh God, as we prepare to come to this, your table, and receive this grace, we give you thanks that you loved us enough to give of your Son, Christ, that through him our sins would be forgiven, that we are washed clean and made anew through his broken body and spilt blood. Bless all who receive this gift this day, that they would know that their sins are forgiven. And for that, we give thanks to you in the highest order as we dedicate our lives and our resources to offering your love into the world, the love that reflects the love we have for you of all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our soul and strength, and the love we have for our neighbor that is equal to the love we have for ourselves. It is in the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Please come to receive the gift of grace.
Well, you've come today and you have borne witness to God's presence in your life. You've received the bread of life. You have been offered a hope that will not disappoint you if you will just join in with Christ to take that hope that you have for your life and for your family or for your community or for your world, and you will join with God to be a partner in making that happen. That can be a greater increase the chance that the hope that we have will not disappoint us. And I assure you that it won't if we just stay faithful. So I look forward to sharing with you on Wednesday the many ways that you plan to be bread of the body of Christ, the body of, of God's life in the world through the ministries of this church and through your own personal ministries. Let's go forth as we stand and receive this blessing and benediction. That as we go forth singing hosannas, that we go forth remembering that God is here for us and we are in turn to be God for the world. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Have a blessed week. Come on.